Good. <laughs> Welcome to 2014, July 24th, uh, Wikispeed Weekly Scrum Ceremonies. We're going to start with demo, and then retrospective when we know the most, and then sprint planning. Then we'll have open session for uh, any conversation that needs to be had and shared across the team. Um, who'd like to kick us off? Well, I guess I'm unmuted and ready. I, I, I'd be happy to, to initiate. So last week, um, I paired with Rob Moorbacher to update the Roadster CAD assembly in the Wikispeed Dropbox CAD folder. And that let me then uh, burn that updated CAD onto a DVD and mail it out to a customer who had purchased our open source plans DVD, which I think is awesome, because those plans are available online to download for free, but some people choose to send us $100 and support us with that, and in exchange we send them the plans on a DVD so they have them offline. Then I took a picture of the interior module for the store that Chris Wallace had uh, entered that card in the backlog, and then took a picture of the side crust structure for the store, then I cut a side crust structure for version 5 out of 6 inch by 6 inch aluminum, 8th inch thick wall, square tube, uh, 6063. Uh, then the Linwood team as a whole, me, with, me as part of it, but a lot more people than just me, together they assembled a second horizontal bandsaw for the Linwood shop, cut a dashboard mount sub-module, uh, cut the V30 suspension mount tube, and uh, we acquired a used 2006 Civic 5-speed shifter from a wrecker on eBay to prototype the 5-speed 4-on-the-floor uh, shifter, or 5-on-the-floor. We marked and cut footwell access in the carbon fiber interior module number 5. Uh, the team ratchet strapped and heated Summit racing seats to bring them back to the correct width. Uh, the seats are marked on the Summit site as 19 inches wide, they ship them out of a box, and I think they store them in some hot warehouses. They often are wider than that. They're often wider than 20 inches when they arrive. So we slid a ratchet strap through the seat belt mount holes, because they have holes that are race-style seats, ratcheted them back down to less than 19 inches, and then applied heat with a heat gun, and then let them set. So now they're back to the correct width. Then delivered engine module V4 to the Renton Joint Venture Factory, delivered another transmission to the Renton, Renton Joint Venture Factory. Worked with Glenn Love there to start the next engine, so we had another running engine down there. Uh, assembled parts list for engine module V4 development and uh, remounted um, the engine in car number one, our test car, with a five-speed manual, manual transmission. And I had a chance to connect with Rob Moorbacher on an ultra-durable aero shell. So he has an email about that. We'll see where that takes us. Uh, next week, I need to spread the word about the Extreme Manufacturing Certified Scrum Master class that's happening in the Linwood shop on August 21st and 22nd. And I'd ask everybody's help uh, sharing that that's going on so we can have more people learning how to set up their own Wikispeed shop and use Scrum for hardware. I also need to order three more fuel cells with fuel level senders in them for the next set of engine modules, and then order three more fuel pumps, high pressure, 2006 Civic fuel pressure, so uh, not um, carburetor, but uh, fuel injection pressure, and then three more fuel pressure regulators with gauges, and order uh, AN7 fittings. I've been told there's a place called Earl's that has inexpensive fittings, so I'll price check there in addition to the internet at large. Then I need to cut the tubes for another engine module V4 frame, and I need to uh, CAD the next-gen engine module uh, so that it can fit a stock fuel tank and uh, then still have at least two cubic feet left over for wiring and electronics being stashed there. I also need to CAD the engine mounts for engine module V4, the current one. Right now we drill them out of aluminum tube, and I think CADed parts are going to be superior cut from a water jet cutter at a plate, so I'll try that. Then I need to call the windshield place about a DOT AS1 flat windshield cut uh, based on CAD until I have Rob Moorbacher's awesome frame here, which I cannot wait for, but I'll limp along with this. And then I need to CAD this uh, fixed headlight. It's actually from a C4 Corvette. Um, 
but it looks a lot like the fixed NSX headlight. Uh, it's an aftermarket piece. They never shipped these cars with this. Uh, but it has a flat bottom, easy mounts. It's already DOT road legal. It's fully enclosed and weather sealed. And I don't know what connector this is, so I guess that's a blocking issue. I assume it's whatever the Corvette used, but I don't know how to get the other end to crimp on, so I might have to cut this off and use a four-flat trailer connector because I can get those easily. I'd rather buy the other end of this, but I don't know what it is. There's only three used wires, so a four-flat would work. Um, since it has a flat bottom and easy mounts and a pretty easy CAD profile, once I CAD it, I think it's going to fit in the existing Roadster aero shells Rob has made, and I think it's going to look awesome uh, if I pull it off. Plus, since it sticks up above the deck, it does kind of look like an NSX, and that's my own personal obsession, unhealthy obsession, for no good reason other than I like it. So, so, so anyway, ultra-efficient cars are the name of the game, but the more they look and act like an NSX, the more I love them, and I, I, it's probably a disease I've caught somewhere. Then, um, uh, <laughs> then uh, CAD the door hinge test. There's been an early ver earlier version of that CADed, uh, and then Rob made a super awesome version that I'm too scared to touch right now. Uh, version where the door folds into the side of the car. I was just going to do something that swings out. I don't know. Rob's too cool for me. Um, here's catting an updated version that just swings out. And then kit that door hinge test so it can be tried maybe in the Renton factory next week. We'll see. Then the team, right now, they're working on reinforcing the mounts for the shop ceiling crane in the Linwood shop so we can hang a car above the class during the Extreme Manufacturing Certified Scrum Master class and as they build it during each sprint, it gets integration tested above them during the lecture portion, which should blow some minds. Um, then they're assembling the steering column mount submodule that they cut last Thursday. Uh, we're going to tighten the front suspension and test it of V29, and then we're going to mock up V30 with duct tape and uh, clamps V30 suspension and see if it has the right clearances, if it fits correctly and then we'll try to install seats in interior module 5. Um, that's the closest I've got to anything like a demo and I got excited and went right into sprint planning. I didn't actually mean to do that. Um, <laughs> who would like to give their demo next? Um, go, go right ahead. Here, I'll mute. Lauren, you're super quiet. I think there's an issue with your microphone. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll raise it. Is that better? No? Oh, I heard it now. Hello? That's better. Yeah. Okay. A little bit better. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, can you still hear me? Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, did we cover blocks last week, and uh, is everybody covering blocks as well as demos? That's an awesome question because before we used to use the daily stand-up format and that included blocks and then we went to a demo format to try that. Yeah, it sounds like the right thing to do is to add demo, uh, add, add blocks uh, at the end of demo or during. So yes, please. Okay. So anyway, uh, um, I, had, I sent out a question about Carica. I'm going to do a share screen and then uh, show you uh, the Carica. And um, I, I, there was a, uh, there were two doing columns, and while while I was trying to add something, I, I lost one one of the doing columns that had the uh, service mark on it. So uh, my, I had a question: If anybody was anybody uh, cleaning it up the way we had planned in the last uh, half hour? I did not. However, you can check which columns are hidden or not and see if the column still exists. That's oh, at the okay. top right. Um, okay. There's a little green eye icon. Hopefully that still exists, especially since it has information you want in there. Okay. Uh, okay uh, sorry. Uh, uh, upper uh, left? Upper right. There, see three orange right, bars right, yeah. near the top right? Yeah. If you click that, yeah, uh, anything with a green eye is visible. Um, yeah. And if that column's not in your list, then that column is gone. Uh, see, there's a teeny thin scroll up, scroll down bar. It's hard to grab, but if you can grab the 
really thin scroll up, scroll down bar, you can scroll down and see all the columns oh. in there. Do you see the column you need? I don't see the second doing that had a lot of things in it. Maybe somebody cleaned it, or maybe I was looking at an old view. Anyway, I put it in the current doing. This OK. One. OK, so uh, this is probably mostly for Joe and Chris. Uh, yeah, basically, I, I uh, did a draft. Uh, there's some schedules at the end for churches and things, and probably one or two of those schedules are, are relevant. But uh, I, uh, I went through all the questions, and uh, some of them I couldn't fill in, so I made a, created a supplementary document with uh, uh, kind of the things that are missing. So this is what this looks like. Uh, yeah, this is a supplementary uh, thing uh, with uh, questions. And yeah, and this is the PDF, uh, fillable PDF. So we got started on that. Yeah, so that's that's the demo. And uh, uh, let's see, blocks. Uh, yeah, I guess so that um, I need things from Joe. And uh, it would be nice, nice to have this thing is a review from Chris. The nice to have is which, Lauren? Uh, uh, review from Chris. Because he's done uh, 501Cs before. But so he said if he had time, he would take a look. Sounds good. When would you? like me to review that. Is it ready now? Um, I think it's ready for review. Um, I was thinking of do a couple of working sessions. So I was thinking of scheduling one for Tuesday, next Tuesday. Sounds good. Yeah, and then maybe one the following Tuesday. Um, I, I had another plan to look at the um, a Creative Commons licensing things. And the overall kind of uh, setup to, to see whether we wanted to have uh, for-profit subsidiaries, uh, for-profit subsidiary, or how to handle. I believe that like extreme uh, programming, and I don't even, I don't know if that even has to be uh, considered. But that was the that was the other thing I thought might we might want to look at before finalizing the application. That's it. So maybe another working session, one or two working sessions. Those dates sound good. During sprint planning, let's find the right time. Thanks, okay. Lauren, very much. Okay. Uh, if you pull this off, we will be, I believe, the first ever federally recognized certified automotive manufacturing nonprofit. Who would like to go next? That's Rob. I'll go next. Um, this week, I well, let me see if I can bring it on, show it to you guys. Uh, oh. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't know if it came up on screen, but I uh, I I built a new scrum board this week, <laughs> and I uh, and I fiberglass the uh, the base of the um, the base of the uh, windshield frame, and also it's also the uh, top of the interior uh, module, but uh, that is all I did. I don't have a picture of the interior uh, of that base uh, fiberglass, but I'll get one out to the team, uh, uh, hopefully tomorrow. And that's all, that's all I did. Oh, I did go over, uh, Joe sent me an email about a reinforced, a uh, heavy duty uh, body. And, uh, and I did do a little uh, number crunching on it just to see what it would, <laughs> see what it would come up to. Uh, and that's it. Thanks, Rob. Did you email me back or not yet? No, I have not emailed you back yet. Okay. I don't have, I don't have all the numbers yet. Oh, and as a follow-on from our last week's <laughs> stand-up, I did come up with an evil plan in which I can send you $1,000 of the 5000 for the aeroshell you've already sent. 
Um, right. And that should go out this coming week. So you should have it shortly. It should be mailed this coming week. I need to wait for a check to clear so that I can. And every little bit helps. I'll attempt to keep that going. If the heavy duty body is a go, I think Scrum Inc., not me, might be able to pay for that right now. So depending on if you have more time than money versus more money than time, there's an opportunity for that. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, I'll, I'll give you an email. I'll send you an email pretty quickly. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Like to next? Uh, I'll go. So I just did a few. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Uh, I just did a few um, things on the website. Um, so I actually made one change to the, the menu. I made it so that uh, the challenges um, menu item does not go to a page anymore so that it works like the other top level menu items just so it's not confusing. Um, I uploaded the pictures that uh, Joe had sent uh, for the interior module and the side impact modules. I also put a, a picture in for the open source car plans. Um, so um, I think I guess I don't have any graphics for the crash test or the extreme manufacturing workshop, but I do think I have some logos for that, so I, I could probably actually do something with that. But did, did not get to it yet. Um, other than that, the only thing I did was update the Carica link. Uh, they've changed uh, the the page formats from I think .jsp to .html, so I updated the link on the sidebar. And I believe that is all that I did this week. Chris, thank you so much. And I've just added a uh, task to my personal Kanban that I'll then put into Carica uh, to send you an image from one of our crash tests, because we've done them before, and I'll, I could find some attractive frame of one of the impacts and send that to you, which, I'll, which I added a card to do. And then uh, there's pictures of the build party on the Scrum Inc. site. And um, honestly... Uh, Scrum Inc. now retails those, so I should have a card with you, Chris, to figure out how we want to do that, because people don't buy those from Wikispeed anymore. They used to. Um, now they're from Scrum Inc. We probably should have them on here, but probably have it redirect to the Scrum Inc. site or something. So actually, let me change the card from find a picture of it to meet with Chris to figure out how to handle that. Okay, excellent. Is there anyone on the call with a demo who has not yet given it? Okay, then folks, do any folks have blocking issues that we didn't mention during demo? Because normally we gave those during the daily stand-up format, but we've switched that to do the sprint ceremonies format, where it starts with demo. Um, so I know blocks weren't right at the top of my mind. A block I have is uh, I don't have a uh, thread key for AN fittings. So AN fittings are, I think, tapered fittings that are often used for uh, fluid connections. And they're tapered and threaded, so it's like an angled bolt uh, on one end and like an angled nut on the other end. And I don't have a thread key to m check their diameter. And in fact, I've never seen one. I bet it does exist, but I haven't found one. And since they're tapered, they're angled, I don't know where on their length to measure them to know the correct size. Um, so I can't just infer it. So short of buying a whole set of fittings and putting them on a key ring or something to make my own key, um, I need to figure something out. So that's a, a blocking issue because I'm running into that all the time in tapered fitting fluid connections. And there's another standard too. There's AN and then something else. And so I don't know if it's AN or the something else. Um, so a key would help me there. Then um, I'm, uh, I have a challenge, maybe not a block, but definitely a slowdown on radiator placement in engine module 5. Uh, anyone who's interested in car cooling, um, 
especially in the extreme scenarios. So if someone's going uphill in the mountains on a really hot day and they're generating a lot of engine heat um, where cooling really matters. I'd love to have their thoughts. Ping me if you have any interest in that at all on uh, radiator placement and then air channeling to that radiator. And then the other is I still have a block and I've got to figure it out like this sprinter next on alternative brake line routing because um, the strategy we're using now has some shortcomings. Those are the blocks I have. Who would like to add other blocks if they have any? Okay then. Are there any blocks that anyone has to add that they have not added? Then let's consider that complete and that takes us to retrospective. Um, I'd be happy to go next. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I feel my ability to contribute to Wikispeed just got even better with the current groomed version of the open source car plans. Uh, it's much more clear. I'm able to work with the Roadster CAD now too, thanks to Rob Morbacher. Um, and uh, we shipped out a DVD. That happened. So someone, somewhere in the world, Santiago, I think, he had a cool name. I haven't met him. I just got the order online. Um, has all the plans to set up their own Wikispeed shop and make the current iterations of the open source car. I think that's awesome. Uh, 10 and 10 for me. A uh, process improvement would be to uh, simplify the Wikispeed Dropbox to the point that it essentially becomes the open source car plans. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there we seldom use, some stuff we never use, but it's there for archive purposes. Maybe that should be often archived somewhere and not taking up the Wikispeed Dropbox for everybody. I don't know. That's a, a process improvement now that we have this open source plans. Who would like to go next? I can. Uh, I'm going to do seven and a half myself and ten for the team and process improvement. Uh, the Dropbox sounds good. Yeah. Lauren, is the current 501c3 app in Dropbox? You're muted, Lauren. You I, just put it, I just put it in the Carica. Um, that works. That's yeah, even so, better, honestly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because it's not finished. But it, when it's finished, you know, and so maybe I can move the um, the other one. The the service mark is. So uh, we're just waiting. Uh, in five days, it's supposed to get published, and I think that may be the end of it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we'll see when it ha happens. And Thanks. then that could be put in the Dropbox. The the you know the uh, whatever. Yeah, I think the application or the uh, we we modified the application, so some something from there, some artifact from there should go in there. Sounds good. And you bring up a good point. We have multiple data stores. We also have own cloud working very well. So I'd say simplify our online storage is maybe the real process improvement I'm attempting to suggest, and then that would lead to putting that new compact and refined <laughs> storage on uh, whatever the storage system of record we want to use. So I'll refine that pitch. Um, cool. Lauren, anything you want to add? Nope. Sound, sounds great. Thanks. Who would like to go next? Rob Moorbacher. Yes, I'll go next. Uh, <laughs> I give myself uh, an eight and a half. Um, an eight, an eight, eight and a half thousand. <laughs> eight and a half. <laughs> I could uh, feel like could have gotten uh, more done this week, but I uh, wasn't able to. But um, I'll give the team um, a nine and a half. Since Are you wearing a sleeveless shirt? I, <laughs> I am. <laughs> you are so living in New Jersey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, Maryland is close to New Jersey, but oh, my God. Well, yeah. It's because I was out on a motorcycle ride today. And, I and bet the you were. It's it's Rob M's anniversary today. It is. Yeah, well, yeah. It's congratulations. Our... Oh, then wear whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's hot out here, man. Riding on a motorcycle with a leather jacket. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I give the team a nine and a half because there's, as Michael would always say, there's always room for improvement and for process improvement. I would, uh, I would, I definitely side with Joe on the Dropbox. There's too much stuff in there. <laughs> Could use some simplification. I just took some, uh, took some stuff out myself that uh, shouldn't have been there in the first place. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Yeah. All right, I can go real quick. Um, <clears throat> I'd say probably uh, maybe a five for me, just because I had almost no time to devote to uh, Wikispeed this week. And that's why it's a 5,000. <laughs> almost no time, you still got some totally important and customer-facing stuff done because you're amazing. I, I jammed it in real quick at the end. It still worked out okay. Uh, and I will go a 10 for the team because I'm still, I, I think I probably say this every week, but it's amazing to see how much stuff gets done and everybody's still plugging ahead. Um, I will say for process improvement, the Dropbox is fine. Um, you mentioned own cloud. That is totally set up and ready just to be kind of production tested. So if we do want to check that out, it is available. and We can discuss what needs to be done there. So. As far as production testing, um, I used it when you set it up, and it worked great. So I don't know of any other testing it needs. Okay. It's uh, merely a strategic decision which online storage do we like? I mean, Carica also hosts stuff, but the pointer to the stuff gets lost if the card goes away, as far as I know. There's, there's probably some way to just mine storage, but I guess it depends on the interface we want to it, and I have no idea. In any case, we probably need to simplify the online storage and then uh, just decide where it would go strategically. So uh, Carica uses Google Docs, I believe, and you can actually go into your Google Doc account and recover fi uh, files that have been deleted. Um, I, the one advantage I think OwnCloud would have over Dropbox is that uh, we're not limited by space. And in, you actually, we can create separate accounts if you do want to separate. I know there is a folder that, that is more like an admin folder, and there's public, and then like if you wanted to share just the CAD things, different accounts could be created for that. So. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, that's a pretty good reason. That's a very good reason. Excellent. Uh, Anyway, that, that can be discussed, or we can figure it out. So. I have an interjection about uh, OwnCloud. I downloaded it, and uh, I downloaded it and set it up, but I uh, don't understand. I, I could use a walkthrough on it if uh, you think it's worth it. If enough people are interested in it, I can we can schedule um, a, a hangout where I can go over it real quick. I'll, I'll, it's been a while since I've used it, too, so I'll actually have to jump in there and get familiar with it real quick before we do a demo, but... Sounds good. Is there anyone on the call with a retrospective who has not yet given it? Uh, that would be me. Michael! Uh, yeah, I, I've been uh, in and out here. Uh, we're having a bit of a rainstorm. My sump pump is running on a standby generator, and my internet is running off a of UPS right now. So, a uh, little te technical difficulty. Um, anyway, uh, haven't gotten. I'm just gonna go through the whole thing. Haven't gotten anything done for the week. Don't really anticipate anything being done next week. Uh, three for me, ten for the team, and cleaning up Dropbox sounds like an awesome idea. <laughs> Michael, is there anything we could do that would make it more fun for you to be productive next week, or possible, or a? a and it's totally fine if it's not possible. But if there can, if there is, what might that be? I don't believe there is. Uh, I'm getting in the middle of summer shutdown at work, and it's just nothing else is happening. So, okay, okay, sounds good then. Except for the rainstorm and the lack of power and all that. Were you flooded out, Michael? Uh, no, no, that's uh, that's being held at bay by the standby generator. Ah, uh, but a what? lot of rain. Uh, there, there's a lot of rain that came down in a hurry. We got uh, probably half an inch in 10 minutes. So, um, And I, it's kind of deciding whether it's raining or not here. I'm not sure exactly what's happening out there, but I can still hear the generator running, so all is good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michael, very much. In addition to that, is there anyone else on the call with a retrospective who hasn't given it? Cool. Uh, sprint planning, I accidentally already did mine. <laughs> Who would like to go next? And Michael did his, thank you very much. Who would like to go next? I can. Uh, so 
I, I'm, I was going to uh, look at the Creative Commons uh, uh, licensing and, and how it might relate to us or just kind of look overall at it in relation to the uh, 501c in particular uh, and set up uh, one or two uh, working sessions with Joe and Chris if Chris has time. Love it. Thank you, Lauren. Anything you want to add? Uh, that's already awesome. Thank uh, you just uh, if you want, you said at this point we were maybe going to actually uh, pick some good times. Yeah. Um, so my Tuesday is actually, I think, completely open, which never, ever happens. Okay. Uh, so I think you can suggest any time you want. But I'm opening my Google Calendar right now just to check. But uh, please just pay me with the time on Tuesday. Okay. And let's drop this base. Okay. I have a largely, I have an open Tuesday. It just never happens. Okay. Oh, I do have a doctor's appointment for my little baby girl in the afternoon at 2 p.m. Seattle time, Pacific. Uh, so not at 2 or right before or right after. Okay. Send me any time you like. Okay. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Um, my sprint planning is um, to uh, get the uh, sides and the top of the windshield frame um, mocked up and CAD structure, uh, support structure. And that's it. That would be amazing. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> Who would like to go next? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to break this down to the smallest task that I can actually get done <laughs> since next week might be a little bit like this week. Uh, but what, So what I'm going to do is on this uh, Tarrant County College Innovation Forum, I'm going to create a Carica card and attach the documents that I have to that so that it's more visible and more people can work on it. Because um, I'm not exactly sure how much time I'm going to have. I, I still, I, the plan is to look over it, but at the very least, I'm going to create the card. <laughs> Gosh, Chris, I wonder if we can't ask them how would they do the radiator cooling and how would they do the brake line routing and get their input. Possibly. It may be a little early in the process for that because we're kind of going through the administration aspect at this point. Okay. And, I mean, and they, they even say it's about a three-month process to get anything approved. But, maybe, yeah, it doesn't seem that innovative at three months. But <laughs> not yet using Scrum. No, not at all. Um, but the, um, some of the departments that may be interested in, in what comes out of it, uh, they have an automotive department. So it may be that I could get in touch with someone over there. I may still know people that work there. See, see if they're just interested in taking it on. So. Excellent. It. Is there anyone with a sprint planning who has not yet given it? Done. That is shipped. So then the open conversation part that completes all the scrum ceremonies need to run the company is, again, uh, we need to figure out anything we can do to help the process improvement, help tidy up Dropbox. So I'd ask people to Everyone make a backup of Dropbox this week if you haven't um, before, let's say, before uh, Friday night. Just make a local backup. And then over the weekend, start killing anything aggressively in Dropbox that you think might be a duplicate. And Because uh, we'll all have a backup, and we can put it back if we need to, and Dropbox lets us rewind some stuff anyway but uh, let's just aggressively nuke anything that we think might be a duplicate or is not currently referenced or is just not current. We'll, we'll put an archive somewhere else. Just blow it away over the weekend. Let's make this simple and small and compact. Um, if we have a newer, better version of it, kill the old one. Let's not make Dropbox the archive anymore. Let's put an archive somewhere else. And then we'll figure out if it's going to be Dropbox or if it's going to be OwnCloud or if it's going to be Carica or if it's going to be Box or whatever. Um, okay, so there's that. Then, blocks. Um, I'd like to have a conversation with anyone who's interested in cooling, radiator cooling, and brake line routing. routing. Of the people on this call now, 
who is at all interested in radiator placement and airflow cooling to it and or brake line routing. Um, give me a hand if you're at all interested, even a little bit. I don't have a hand to show you, but yes, me. Okay, there's two. Uh, Lauren? No? Okay, we've got a, a Michael and a Moorbacher. I don't know anything about those things, so well, I, I, anyone's I'm interested in all the tech stuff, but uh, it might be a little specific before I learn about uh, metal work, etc. There's no time like the present, Lauren. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, put me down. <laughs> Everybody's invited to observe. I'll save that until after any other blocking issue conversation, but maybe we'll even do some of that now. Um, then I need to get the word out about the Extreme Manufacturing uh, August 21st class so that the most people know how to do this as possible, and my day job makes a ton of money, which is also valuable because then I have a day job. So I just tried to scare my, share my screen, and I'm going to go to scruminc.com, and there's courses, upcoming Scrum courses, XM CSM, Extreme Manufacturing Certified Scrum Master Class, Joe Justice, uh, assisted by Joe Riddle and Alex Brown in Seattle, Washington, Wiki Speed Shop. It's $1,650 a person, but there's an early bird fee until August 1st to make it $1,400, and there's group discounts for more than three people, and it gets really cheap if eight or more people from a given group come. If I click on register, it takes me to the class description. Everyone in the world needs to know about this. Yeah, here, price, early bird discount, $1,400. Um, this includes a certified Scrum Master credential, two certified scrum trainers are flying in to do this class, which is ridiculous. You'd normally only get one, but you have me and two certified scrum trainers just because they want to learn how this works. Um, and uh, that's usually $1,000 to $2,000 by itself. Uh, it's a two-day, nine-to-five thing. If anybody can help me tweet, Facebook, socialize this link, especially between now and August 1st while the early bird fee is still live, which is only a few days. I think it's six days. Um, that would be extremely helpful to people knowing how to use Scrum beyond software, particularly in hardware projects, and to my day job, which gives me a job which helps fund Wikispeed. Um, so I'd be enormously grateful if people would share this URL by whatever means they socially share things, or if they can think of someone in particular, even better, send them an email and say, this project I'm involved with is teaching a class on how to run projects of this type. I thought you might be interested. Um, I would be very grateful for that. Are there any other blocking issues folks want to discuss before I dive into radiators? Done! OK. So this would be easier if I could draw. Let me see if I can turn the draw app on on this old computer. Looks like I can. This user is not running draw. Uh, is there a way to just give us a blank screen? Google Hangouts so I can just draw? Maybe not. Well, I'll try to do it this way. So if I screen share again, I'll open paint.net, a paint program. So if we have our Wikispeed chassis, oh, come on, paint.net. If we have our Wikispeed chassis, and we're looking at it from right about the top. Right now, all the cooling happens in the back. So we have a crossbar. And this area, if my mouse is where I think it is for everybody, is the interior. 
this area, if my mouse is where I think it is for everybody, uh, I'll draw right there. This area is where the engine module goes. At present, the engine module is in the rear. It's right here. That's where the radiator is. And to get air to it, we've just had an open floor and radiator fans pulling air out through the floor. Well, either our radiator isn't, our fans aren't strong enough or something because we're not getting adequate airflow under high load situations. On really hot days when we're running the engine really hard, we still overheat with this layout. So what Rob Moorbacher did is he designed air scoops right here to allow more fresh air to come in. Now we haven't received those yet, so we haven't tested them. They may solve the problem, but we don't know. So that allows fresh air to come in from the front in addition to the floor. And in fact, it might pull some more in because they're actually scoops. Um, the most common solution to this, the thing everybody else does that we could consider, is they put the radiator up front. Now, the downside to that is that we have to have radiator cooling lines going right here through the bottom of the interior module and out to the engine. That's how most cars work if they have an engine towards the middle or the rear, is they still have the radiator up front, race cars or road cars, and then they have two pipes, one for hot water and one for cold water or coolant fluid, and it goes through a tunnel in the interior. Well, we don't have a tunnel in our interior yet, so we'd have to modify the interior module as well, and then we'd have to modify the front crust structure to hold the radiator, and then we'd have to modify the pedal plate to make way for that cooling tube. This gets the very most cold air, because it's what's being rammed onto the front of the car, uh, so it's the most efficient cooling that anybody knows, that's why most people do it, but it has a ripple effect through all of our modules. We could take that on, but also then if you pull the, the engine module, you need to pull the radiator from the front too, it then splits that module. So if we switch to an electric drive module, like the one Michael Olchek is using in Canada, it has a different battery coolant requirement. We might need to change the front of the car in order to change the engine, whereas now the cooling is embedded with the engine module. It all comes and goes as one unit, which is very easy and clean, but so far we're not getting enough cooling. The side scoops might do it. Another option is to put the radiator at the front of the rear engine module right here. These side scoops can help. We can also even add a roof scoop. The only advantage is that's the stock position. If we take a front wheel drive engine and move it to the back, we then don't have to move the radiator behind it anymore. It's the, it, it, it saves time in assembly and fabrication. When we buy a, a Honda engine or a Toyota engine or a Nissan engine or a Ford engine from a transverse front wheel drive setup, it already has the radiator in front. The tubes that come with it are already sized to have the radiator in front. So that actually might not help or hurt cooling, I don't know, but it would make uh, assembly easier. Right now we make custom tubes that wrap around the engine to go to the rear mounted radiator. Um, also, we can put the radiator up into the airflow. A few race cars do this. The problem with that is it blocks rearward visibility. It blocks a huge amount of what you see out of the rear window. Um, we can tilt it on its side like a rear spoiler. I've never seen that done. Maybe it has been done. That might work and might not block any more rear visibility than a rear spoiler. Um, gosh, so this is what we have now. I'll label it now. Um, this is possible. A radiator mounted up in the Airstream. This is possible. Everybody's doing it, but it does have a ripple effect across the other modules. And this we actually did before as well, but we also didn't have enough cooling at that time either. Maybe the side scoops will solve it. 
but that was what we did first, is actually the front-mounted radiator. That's what we had during the XPRIZE. And again, we took air through the floor. But we, and in the XPRIZE, we ran in very low load situations, ultra fuel efficiency, and we didn't overheat then. But we did later on really hot days and really strenuous situations. Okay, those are the radiator solutions as I understand them. That's the problem to be solved. Uh, I would love any ideas or feedback. Looking for feedback right now? Right now. I'll take more later too, but some conversation now is helpful. I have when you I would go ahead, Rob. Oh, when you had the radiator in the front, not in the front of the car, but the front of the module, what was your where? What was the shape of the where the air came from, and how big of a hole was it? Weird and bad. Um, the the goal was. Uh, here, I'll, I'll go back to the screen share and I'll show you kind of. I wish I could just bring up a picture easily. If I'd prepped this, I'd have pictures in a library. The interior, it has rear seats, so it's actually at an angle like this, right? It's not straight up and straight down. Right. And so the rear person's back arcs against there. Well, the area behind that made a plenum to take air in, right. and what we had planned to do but didn't was have side intake take ducts right here, like the Acura NSX, because I'm obsessed with that for some silly reason. I swear, it's a disease. To take air from right in here to fill in behind the seats like a plenum. So the interior module was originally designed for the XPRIZE to include an air plenum behind the seats as part of the interior module. And then the first aeroshell was specced to take air in from the sides right here. But we didn't. What we did do is we had a hole in the floor under the rear seat plenum to, to take air in. And we didn't get enough air in that way. Maybe we didn't run the fan high enough. Uh, I'm not sure. But, but you, um, it, was just a, it was just a hole with a, with a rough edge, right? Is what you're saying? Yeah, it was a hole with a rough edge, and then it had seat backs in front of it to box it in. Yeah, I think if you, um, I think running it uh, on the rear could still work if you just had a smooth, um, a smooth flow of air through it. So you'd have to round the, uh, the, you know, the right where the air is coming through. It couldn't be a ninety degree angle, or something like that. Right, have, right, right. Okay, have to so that guide hard. the air up and in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes a huge difference on the, uh, on turbines if you and well. Back before turbines, turbines for model jets, it was um, uh, gas-powered uh, fans, and uh, and the biggest gain in flow was just round to the front of the intake. Got it. Okay, um, Rob, if you want to sketch anything like that, I, I think I understand the idea already. I mean, you explained it pretty well. But if you get excited and want to sketch anything, even on a napkin, and email a picture or post it to Carica. I dig it. Sure. Thanks. Right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. <laughs> oh my <gosh. laughs> Michael Olchek, I'd love to hear any and all input now that you're back on. Please go right ahead. Let Joe pick his baby up. Michael Olchek. Yeah, I keep dropping off and dropping on. Um the uh the I would vote for putting the rad in the front of the module, not the front of the car. And um, I don't know how uh, the side ducting is done right now. And I don't, I don't remember there being a plenum at all to, to direct the air uh, either to the back or to the front. But uh, getting some of the pressure that that we're getting out of that scoop and uh, getting some airflow into into the rad would. Uh, would be good in my books. How does the air get out of the uh, rear module? Like it doesn't go out the top or the back. It, it goes out the bottom. Is that it? The the current setup is that it goes out the back. There is a an enlarged radiator hole when we moved it out the back of car number one for test, and car number two had the radiator in the front of the uh, front of the engine module. So right in the middle. 
Uh, Michael, I've got a question for you right off the bat, though. Um, and I, I intuitively actually agree with you, but I don't know why. I'm wondering if you can give me a good reason so I understand my own opinion. Um, why do you prefer the engine, the radiator in the front of the engine module as opposed to the back? Um, the front of the engine module gives you the opportunity to use the static pressure. Um, so you're, you're pushing the car through the air. You're, you have positive pressure on the front. And uh, airflow is coming in. You don't. You have to direct it, but you don't actually have to pump it or blow it. So uh, uh, when you're coming in the bottom, you actually have to suck it through the radiator. Whereas uh, if you've got it in the front and you've got some sort of ducting, you can uh, you can just direct the air toward it. You can add to the airflow with uh, with fans or blowers or whatever. But you're you're making use of some of the energy that you're um, giving up uh, in the airstream. So you're saying it's closer to the high pressure areas of the airstream, easier to route it with ducting? Yes. Okay. If I follow, and I'm not saying this is true, if for, if somehow, some way, it were the same level of complexity to direct pressurized air to the radiator regardless of location, then all would be the same, in your opinion? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, if you can, if it, if one way is as easy as the other, uh, the radiator in the back is a whole lot easier to get to. Yeah, and that was the reason some of the mechanics were saying why they were saying for maintenance reasons. Uh, okay, but how come then you wouldn't vote to put it all the way in the front of the car in the maximum high pressure air, um, dis despite that it has the ripple effect on all the modules? Well, the the ripple effect on all the modules is a biggie. But splitting the module into two parts and having uh, long hoses going from one to the other, it, it's just a, it's not clean. It's not, you, you don't look at it at the design and say, yeah, that's how you do it. I hear you. Even though that's how uh, a lot of vehicles do, but it, it is complex. And if you're going to do things like a modular engine, uh, a swappable engine module, it's a real pain. Yep. Okay, did that bring up any other feedback from anybody? Well, I wanted to add something. Uh, I've got a, a, a five-word formula, and it's got no, there are no vents on the front of the car to the radiator. The radiator is completely inside, you know, completely encased in, under, you know, in the bumper and the hood. The only airflow that gets in there is from underneath the car. And it's and it's a smoothly shaped plenium that just that goes that ramps up into there, and there's only probably about five inches of space between the radiator and that in that ramp that goes in there, and the ramp's about as wide as the radiator. And that car never overheats, and that's a V8 that's putting out almost 400 horsepower. Rob, can you take some pictures of that? Because I don't have one here to play with. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I can take some pictures of that tomorrow. No problem. That car totally matches your sleeveless shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're at 7 o'clock, and there's a bunch of people in the shop um, at, here in Linwood. So I will get to rock with them. Folks, thanks for um, even spending some time after the scrum ceremonies on um, brainstorming cooling solutions. I'd love any follow-up emails, or if people are watching this uh, video later, please leave it in the comments or send them an email to info at wikispeed.com. We always care about it. Even if you watch this 10 years later, I'd love to see what you think. Um, folks, thanks. Have an amazing week, and you can email us at info at wikispeed.com with questions and comments. Later, guys. See ya. Good night, guys. Good night. Everybody that's gone except me, I don't know how to exit this thing. <laughs>